kind of settling down from the entire Cascade Loop because what an amazing trip that was. Uh, but things aren't going to change. I'm still going to be pr producing a couple more videos from Washington before I hit the road and head east officially. And I will give you some more information here later in August about what exactly is the plan for the next four to five months on the road. Later. Later. I want to keep you in suspense a little longer. Ironically, where I'm at right now, I'm still on the Cascade Loop. <laughs> I found a free camp area. You can, you can camp on the river and come down here. I got the RV parked up the bank. Uh, just near Monroe, actually. So I'm just taking one more day to just sit here and edit video and work. And then I'll have to get back to civilization tomorrow. I, I keep coming down here because it's pretty and it's quiet. I'll show you the area though. Mainly what the area is for is for tent camping. Here's a tent camping area that's really close to the water. You just hike all your gear down the hill. But if we go up here to the parking lot, I guess you'd call it. Well, here's the information, <laughs> kind, of, kind of minimal. It says we're in our national forest and the camping limit is 14 days for free. I think I counted four RVs. There's this trailer that's been dropped. I am all the way back as far as I can get and the bottom jacks raised up to get level so that I'm off the road. On the other side of me are some more people that are comfortable. There's a, a van and a big Class A Southwind and another camper van right there. This area, unlike some of the other, you know, real campgrounds that I found, this one's really being utilized and used and that's probably a good thing. I don't see any trash on the ground anywhere. This place is clean for a pack it in, pack it out campground. I'm not really sure what that is, but no, I'm glad. It's really clean. I just don't have access to the water here. I got to go back to the trail, which I don't mind doing. Oh, and just as I was talking, the sun like came out in full force. How about that? Nice. Still no service. Nothing, nothing Verizon, AT&T, nothing. It's just that. And I, I feel like I didn't really talk about that very much in my Cascade Loop series, but you need to be aware. You should be aware that cell phone service for all carriers, almost non-existent. Maybe five or seven percent of the entire loop has any service, and those are the big cities like Leavenworth, Wenatchee, and Everett. <laughs> so, just something to consider. Trying to stay cool, man. This is just a day in the life of a nomad, I guess. Yeah. I've come out to one of my favorite spots here in the northwest, the Nisqually River down here. Uh, under partial shade, still getting a little bit of solar and a view of the Nisqually River down here. This is actually the spot that has the rope swing. There's a big group of people over here, I won't say hogging the area, but they've kind of blocked it off for their own personal use and yeah, oh well. But you know, every once in a while on this side of the mountains, it does get hot. And I had mentioned that Olympia, Washington area averages 76 degrees in July for a high and 77 degrees in August for a high. However, to get that average, there still has to be some hot days that happen to hit 90 or so. And uh, you either go to the ocean, you find some shade, or a nice body of water to uh, dunk in. And I got some friends showing up later. I th Well, that's the tricky part is they'd also talked about going to another spot. I may be moving today, but you got to get here early to get the good spots. So I don't, I don't know where we're hanging out for the day. But getting ready to make a little crock pot meal here finally it's been a while i have another fun little update that's not carmen the electric <laughs> this one's white <laughs> you'll be happy to hear that uh, electric is now shipping out all of their finalized bicycles as you know i got the black version which was a prototype and they took some of my uh, criticism and uh uh, help in trying to develop the final version along with some other people who are testing out the other prototypes so there has been several changes to the bike one being that now we have five levels of pedal assist the other being the uh, rear fender here has now three points of contact total um, again i really appreciate electric sending me out the newest version of the bike it's available in black like i had or white like this I kind of prefer the white because it matches the RV a little better. Uh, currently, right now, my mom has Carmen. <laughs> or actually, let's just keep everything simple. We're going to call this one Carmen also. So I still have Carmen, the electric 
e-bike. And if you don't think that's funny, I, I don't know what's wrong with you. Uh, I'm charging her up right now. Actually, nope, we're fully charged right now. And uh, yeah, so she'll go in the back of the RV where the other e-bike was at. So I finally got a new crock pot, everybody. A 10 quart monster crock pot. I don't know if you can see how big it is. It takes up almost the entire stove here. We're gonna make my famous Dr. Pepper pulled pork this afternoon. I'm making quite a big batch here because I'm gonna feed some friends and I wanna have some leftover. So how many? We've got 7.23 pounds of boneless pork shoulder butt roast. Mm-hmm. Just put the roast there in the bottom of the crock pot. This is my own easy little recipe, but we're gonna add a little bit of onion powder to it. Mm-hmm. A little bit of garlic salt. Mm-hmm. And then Dr. Pepper instead of chicken broth. Put this right around the pork roast and go about half full around the pork roast. We'll let that settle there and see how that looks. There we go. Put the lid on that guy. Set this guy to high. And in five hours, this will be ready to shred. But in no time at all, it's going to start smelling good in here. It turns out we're actually going to be moving on to the other river spot. Oh, that's the other thing about being here is that that train will go off. gonna actually head back over to Pioneer Park in Lacey and uh, hang out. It's just a little too busy here. There's more parking over there and it's more convenient with a couple friends I'm hanging out with. So that's what we're gonna do instead. So I'll pack everything up, get the e-bike on the back of the RV, put the table away, and we will get on the road. Again, having that lid with the secured lock on the crock pot, that's, that's a really good thing. What do you think, buddy? Is this gonna be a good spot? You wanna hang out today by the river? Yeah? Okay. Now we're here at Pioneer Park. This is the Deschutes River, so it's a completely different river, and I feel like it's a little warmer. <laughs> but anyway, let's be coming out here. This place is going to get busy this afternoon eventually. I got the RV parked over in the sun. I get lots of solar, cooking that pork, and Jack's with me, so everything's good in the world today. Guess what, everybody? Checking temperature. We're at 160. We are good. It is time to start shredding this guy. And I get to finally use my bear paws that I got in uh, Winthrop to tear this up. Oh yeah, look how tender that is. It's just gonna melt and fall apart. Oh man, I love it. It's kind of warm still. <laughs> Let me get this all tore up here and then we'll add the barbecue sauce. All right, got the pork all shredded in there. We're gonna add some honey barbecue sauce. Not, not sparingly or anything, just uh, Oh yeah, and just like that, Dr. Pepper pulled pork. And grab some buns and start digging in. Whew. There we go, it's a sandwich time. Oh yeah, it's delicious, you wouldn't like it. So this company, Best Tech, sent me an electric toothbrush from their company. Wanted me to uh, open it up and check it out. So that's what we'll do. On the back here, it says it's got 21 days of charging. It's got wireless charging. Well, that's cool. And it's got time settings of two minute, two and a half, and three minutes. Ooh, wow. Okay. So there's the base. You can get an idea for how it fits in my hand. It also comes with three toothbrush heads, three total to get me started. And if you travel or you're in an RV like me, there's this neat little carry case, which is kind of cool. There we go. I feel like this thing really wants to vibrate. I didn't read the directions, but oh, we're vibrating. There we go. 
Ooh. It's been a long time since I've tried an electric toothbrush. I'm going to set it to the three minute mark. Again, the wireless charging feature is really cool. It's like, just like my iPhone. You just set it down and charge it overnight every 21 days. Fully waterproof, obviously, and that supersonic vibration, it's hard to explain. I've never had my entire jaw vibrate. Like, you can actually feel this thing really working a lot harder than it would normally be if I just had a normal toothbrush. So, again, thanks Best Tech for sending this out to me with the extra two toothbrush heads. I'll put a link in the video description if you're interested in checking out one of these as well. <laughs> Anyways, got to pack up a few things, clean the crock pot. And uh, Jackson and I will be back on the road. We are leaving Washington very, very soon with some big news announcements. So um, hang tight. See you in a few days. Bye, guys.